William Hogarth, for me, was one of Britain's most outstanding artists. He was a total creative, blessed with the most amazing skills as a painter, printmaker, pictorial satirist, social critic and editorial cartoonist. What a bloody shot. He was a true Londoner, born in 1697 in Bartholomew Close, a bistro whiff away from the Smithfield meat markets, and Hogarth would later learn to nurture his artist skills to batter and bruise the city's aristocracy, the super rich and commoners alike. Much of his focus was directed at the folly of man, the repeat offenders of immoral acts, political stupidity and public witless ignorance. But on one level, I think Hogarth was having a lot of fun. He was quite simply taking the piss. Ah, oh, now there's an art commission to die for. In 1730, he was now a man of acid wit. He cared not who he offended. And a comic strip-like series called Modern Moral Subjects became an absolute sellout. Gin Lane was Hogarth's car crash ride through the streets of central London. It's a view of the poor, almost committed to drinking themselves to death. Many believe that Gin was the heroine of its day. A sweet too many sees this baby being dropped into the abyss. Addicts slumped, adult, almost on every street corner. Quite obviously this is the 21st century version of Happy Hour. We also see buildings tumbling to the ground. Vicious fights break out and soon turn to street war. There are hangings in the rafters of buildings. People queue up to pawn their worldly possessions to fund their quick fix for their next addiction. It's binge drinking on a titanic scale, but perhaps no more shockingly reminiscent than that of today's Student Freshers Week. Hogarth seemed to study society life intently. In Harlot's Progress, it tells the tale of a country girl enticed into the whirling dervish of vice and prostitution. She starts happily enough, the mistress of two men, soon with fading looks a fall from grace, is imprisonment, and one illegitimate son later, hey presto, the ride is over. She now lies helpless, forlorn, dying with a very popular disease called cephalus. It's all a depiction and cycle of innocence, corrupted, sex, decay and inevitable death. Meanwhile, Rake's progress highlights the son of a recently deceased financier who dumps his pregnant lover Sarah for the pull of drink, gambling and debauchery. Soon with money dwindling, the bailiffs and prisons soon beckons he is surprisingly saved by the bell with the love and money from his former love Sarah. But amazingly, Tom dumps her again. And unbelievably, he marries an aging, dumpy, one-eyed heiress. Quite a catch. With a constant pension for gambling and drinking and whoring, his next stop is the debtor's prison, just before booking in a final night's sleep at the Hotel Bedlam, an institution for the poor and insane. Now, I love London. So did Hogarth. Even then the city offered an exceptionally vibrant and diverse urban culture. Its cobbled back streets was a mecca for nefarious activities, a street theatre of immorality and class stupidity. However, William is not just confined to the characters of filth and muck of the back streets. His Hargothian eye also gave the gentrified and privileged a spanking too. Here we can see one of many satirical political illustrations which, like many, repeatedly highlights the useless, destructive character of Britain's ruling classes. Fast forward to 2015, what fun he'd have in politics today. William Hogarth. We salute.